dude. Hey, thanks for taking the time to meet me absolutely, today. Absolutely, absolutely. Good? Yeah, I just got here a minute ago. So. Okay, good. I haven't had you I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, oh, man. So, I mean, basically what was leading up to this is how you had that uh that message the one week where you said about you know talking to people in a way that uplifts them and, and encourages them and, and that sort of thing and then i came to you the next week and i said you know i was totally on board with your message like that yeah that's 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 how i i that's my philosophy and then i said but as i thought about it you know, so, Sure. Good. Good. Um, I'll just get a water with lemon to start. Um, as I thought about that through the week, you know, I thought, okay, I talk to other people that way, but that's not my self-talk. That's not my self-image. That's not how I, you know, the internal voice in my head and, and my self-criticism and everything is not even close to an alignment with that. You know, so then as part of that follow up conversation, you you asked me a question and you said, do you believe the word of God? And so I had to, I mean, that that wasn't a simple question to me. Okay. Like you can say, this might be a little like bristle against whatever notions you have because i really thought about it what does that question even mean so not only what is not what is the answer to that question but what is the question and it might not even necessarily been what you thought you were asking thank you, me. Sure. Thank you very much One minute. Uh, yes please thank you. so you know i i didn't know even necessarily how to answer the question and then as i thought about it I had yes no maybe I'm getting it you know, like I had a variety of answers so but that's that's what's bringing me to this point of wanting to fill in more of where I'm coming from and, and how I processed that question yes, so that's why I wanted to get together with you. No problem. No problem. so you asked me you know do I believe the word of God and so I had to think and, and I like thinking like this it's what I do and I even take it to an extreme where I'll like reverse things like just as an illustration and I'm not saying by any means that I agree with this interpretation okay so when, when uh, Jesus says says uh, don't be like the heathen who think that they'll be heard for their much speaking I'll even go to the point of going what if he's saying there's nobody there to hear you? Yeah. Right. Wow. right? Wow. Like, I'm willing to go that far with stretching what something might mean. Okay. You know, so so I'm really critically looking at everything to an absolute extreme. And I, I, li I mean, I like I like that one. You know, hey, there's nobody there to hear you. <laughs> I mean, just think if that's really what he was saying. You know? And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's what he was saying. <laughs> right. You have that creative right. But, but that's where I want to go when, when I'm looking at things is I want to go, did I really explore all the angles or the options or did I really think about that? Um, and so when you say, you know, do I believe the word of God? I'm not going to just answer that because first I got to figure out what the question means. And there's what whatever you may thought you were asking me when you say that. But I'm going to process even that and go, well, what is the word of God? You know, so that, I mean, I spent probably a month before I even tried to answer the question. Um, and so, is that your phone? Yeah. <laughs> I it's, feel it's it on the table. Ignore. It's what happened all, the whole time we're here. Um, no, that's fine. I just was, wanted to make sure I wasn't feeling something that wasn't there. Silent. So, as I continued to think about it, I was like, how... You know, that's why I come up with the, these things like... Like, uh, 
you know, what I said in the one study about about the fruit of the spirit. Like, okay. Um, so, and you even said last night, like, like anxiety, fear, um, insecurity. Like, these are these are things that are not from God, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're iffy on that. Well, because there are there is a godly fear. That reverence for him. But we're, if we're talking about the same thing, uh-huh. as far as the ones that are not from God, that's what I was talking about, the things that are not from God. Okay. Because I think that there is, too, sometimes when, for instance, like every time I preach or speak, I get nervous. Mm-hmm. And I think that is an area where, look, you got to fully rely on the Holy Spirit, because by your own natural means, you're not that good, Christian. So, I mm. think it's a discerning where I can go back and forth. <laughs> <into that. laughs> I would I would disagree a little bit. I think I think you need to give yourself credit that interpretations are always going to you're going to grow. Your your interpretations are going to change. They're going to vary. There's going to be something, you know, there, there's not perfection, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that shouldn't be the measurement. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways that that might be a hindrance if, if you just say, I'm going to be me. And that's that's exactly what I need to be. I mean, and so even here, like you can see, I can speak of you well. It's no, it, there's no problem with that. It's just a matter of like, what is really the the, te- the tool of discernment, and so what I concluded was that that's the tool of discernment. Like, if it gives you peace, if it promotes love, if it if it gives you security, if it helps you to trust people, um, which is one of my like interpretations. I think a lot of times when faith is talked about, it's really talking about trusting people. Um, I think a lot of times there's a little bit of an overemphasis in a different direction where it's actually talking about trusting people versus, like, say, being suspicious of people. But any, you know, so if it promotes those things, if it, if it makes you feel kinder, if it relaxes you, if it helps you treat people better, like, that's, that's what you get in terms of the Word of God. Right, so there, there's there's a discernment right there. If it if it makes you feel like like divisive or um, you know like, like you want to get into an argument with somebody, you're probably not hearing the voice of God or, or not interpreting it correctly. So that's another thing is like just when it comes to interpretation. So like. If I take me as an example in my experience, like growing up, I was sensitive, you know. Um, I would cry easily. I was, can you believe it, smaller than the other kids? <laughs> you know, um, and so it just kind of was like that sensitivity wasn't related to me as positive. It was related to me as like toughen up, you know, that kind of thing. And unfortunately I did. And I think that's really unfortunate. So that sensitivity turned into retribution. You know, that sensitivity turned into callousness. That sensitivity turned into I'll show you. And I became a really mean person in a lot of violently abusive ways and verbally abusive ways and that's because I was sensitive that was because I was hurt you know and uh, so it wasn't until I felt a sense of value at all that I was able to start to let that go because basically it'd be that's that's why it has to be my way is because you're not listening to me. You're not doing what I'm saying. You're not validating that I have value because I don't have a sense of value in myself to begin with. 
So the point is that this sensitivity can be used positively or negatively. And that can also depend on your perception of that attribute. So it's kind of like saying that whatever characteristic you have isn't necessarily good or bad. It's how you, how you channel it, how you use it. So if that sensitivity is for me to give you an ear and listen to you and help you out, that's a positive. If that sensitivity is for me to feel like you don't value me and so I'm going to hurt you, that's not. So it's not, the, it's not that characteristic of my, of my being that's good or bad. It's how I use it. And so that was just like even coming to that conclusion was important in my self-image thing because, you know, that was a negative. I'm too sensitive. And it could also be a point where like if you think like I'm sensitive I'm I, I am attentive to people's needs or, or what you know I feel what you feel I have this ability now that I recognize it that way I, I kind of notice when when people are in a mood I'm in that mood like I take on what they're feeling and in some ways that can be negative when it's a negative mood because I got it's not just I don't merely feel it I kind of go there you know which is one of the things I want to be able to grow and be able to be stronger to be able to feel it but bring them out of it you know kind of thing like I would like to use that and so I guess when you're asking me do I believe the word of God I have to explore that question and say what does that mean and so that's part of one of the things like discerning that what does that mean how do i how do i judge that how do i put that together and so i kind of investigated studied it out thought about it meditated on it did all these kinds of things and i saw this contrast that just struck me of this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Versus if you be the son of God. So what's the one? The one is a challenge saying, I don't think you're the son of God. Why, why don't you prove it? Here's this thing you need to do to prove it. Do this, do this, do this. At the end, what is it? Get yourself down off that cross. Right? Every time it says, if you be a son of God, there's some challenge to prove it. Show us a sign. Prove it to us. So you have to earn an approval from this challenge, right? So that's not the word of God. Because the word of God is challenging you to prove that you're the son of God. Whereas the word of God is saying, this is my uniquely beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And so that was my conclusion as to, it's probably not even what you thought you were asking me. But that was my conclusion as to what does it mean, do you believe the word of God? Now I've settled what the question is. So the question is, do I believe God when he says about me, this is my uniquely beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear him. And that was when I got to the point. Hey guys. Father, we thank you for this food that we're about to receive. Bless hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name, bless this conversation. We ask for your leading, your guiding, and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you for everything. Um, yeah. Uh, question. Oh, yeah. So, so that was when I settled what the question actually was to then determine what I thought the answer was. And the answer ended up being like, yes, I do believe that. Which was really more of, yes, I believe. I believe that's what it, what what is, you know, what God says. But I don't necessarily believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you can say, you can say I'm a good employee, right? And I can say, 
I believe that you believe that I'm a good employee. Right. Right? You don't believe me. Right. So that's kind of one conclusion I got to was, was like, I believe that's what's said, but it hasn't sunk into me to believe it. And then another conclusion I had... I'm a weirdo. I do this stuff. Ignore me. No, that's fine. Um, another conclusion that I had... <laughs> this is what I'm eating! <laughs> was that, therefore, I didn't believe it. Ooh. Okay. So, even if that's what God says, I don't agree. God's wrong. Kind of, so to speak, to, to really right. put it blunt, right. you know. So, I mean, that's that's a hard thing to grapple with to say, you know. God says, "I'm His beloved Son, and He's well pleased," and I say, "No," <laughs> you know. And and so, isn't that what a child does? Huh? Right. <laughs> right. That's my kids all the time. Uh huh. Right. Listen. No, no, whatever. And, and it says whether they deliberately say it or their actions, they might say, yeah, my oldest. Mm -hmm. He's going to be like, he's quick to say, yes, that. Do you understand? Yes, that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that. AKA, I just want to go along with my life. Leave me alone, daddy. And so I'm saying, but you didn't do what I said. Or you didn't receive. Mm -hmm. You didn't, like, apply to that area. And then he'll be like, oh, so with the father, I always know where he's at. But I love what you said. I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. Because that doesn't change my love for him. Right. It just shows me the area where I need to help him grow within his relationship with me. Mm -hmm. Point peace. I know you're, and I'll shut up about this. Mm -hmm. You got some right here. Mm -hmm. um, we took the black lab we had. Mm -hmm. We did a family walk this morning before I got here. Right. So I said, Is your, in the morning they switch every week. Who takes the dog out in the morning? He took the dog out of his road, responsibility for him to do, the, do a BM in the, in the morning. Right. So we're going out, and I said, all right, you need to grab the, the, the poop bag, so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. We get out there. What does he not have? <laughs> the poop bag. Right. Well, I thought that, it, but I already said to prepare you, this mm -hmm. is what you need to go ahead and do. So now I need you and the dog to go back to the house to get the bag, mm -hmm. and then come and join the rest of us. Well, he could have believed what his daddy said mm -hmm. in preparation for it, or he gets the opportunity to go back and do it again. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I love about our Heavenly Father, is that when it's something revealed, I get to be like, all right, I get to do it again. Sorry, that's that's what I was getting from what you were saying. Go ahead. No, well, actually, I want to spring off of that a little and go back to when I was a supervisor in a warehouse, and I was a supervisor, because I think this is like one of my, it's, it's interesting that this is one of my principles, even back when I was a nihilistic atheist, right? Okay, so I'm the supervisor, but I see my job as, my job is to make sure, let's say you're, you're one of the employees, my job is to make sure you can do your job. My job isn't to make sure that you do what I tell you to. My job is to make sure you have everything you need in order to do your job, which includes supplies, training, safety considerations and safety training, uh, equipment, etc. And so if, if something's not getting done, then I need to go, well, is training needed? Uh, uh, is, is better equipment needed? Or are we short on supplies? Do we maybe not have enough manpower? You know, I mean, there's there's possibly other issues that it's not just like, not just to say, well, we need to sit down with this employee and discuss whether they're going to remain employed or, right, or whatever. Right. right. But there's all these other considerations to take in saying... Have I done my job to make sure that he's doing his job? Because maybe that's where the issue is. Maybe the equipment's not good enough. You know, maybe we're expecting higher efficiency than the equipment will, will allow. Maybe we're uh, short on supplies and they're having to improvise, and that's taking extra time to improvise how to how to not use the right size box. 
And if we would just buy the right size box, that cut the time down each time by several minutes. You know, and, and those are things we actually did have to consider. Like, we had the wrong size box. <laughs> and, and every time you had to put the thing in the box, you had to cut the box and, and make it two inches shorter. Oh, wow. You know? And so that's a consideration. That's, a, that's an efficiency issue that, you know, that's not the employee's fault. Right. But it's just a general philosophy that says, you're not here to do what I demand of you. I'm here to make sure you can do what you're required to do. And in some cases that might include, you know, let's call it training of saying, you know, maybe you don't properly understand your, your requirements. And even that is is something that you do with the attitude of saying, maybe they really just don't understand. You know, and you have to go through all that before concluding like, well, you know, this is probably not an ideal employee. <laughs> so I concluded that yes, I believe that was the message. I believe that when it comes to the word of God, that's what he's saying is, is he's saying I'm his beloved son. But then I concluded that I don't actually believe that. I disagree. Um, <laughs> for whatever that, whatever that, you know, consequence is that, you know. You don't believe what? I don't believe, I, I don't believe in that kind of value for myself. So the father has a value for me that is greater than what I have for myself. And I'm I'm agreeing, let's say, that I disagree with that assessment. So I'm saying, okay, I understand that assessment. That's not the that's not my conclusion. So in that way, no, I don't believe it. So you just don't believe what he says about you, but you believe his word as it applies to anybody else. Right. And that's I mean that's not something to just like gloss over and just be like, you know, okay, well, whatever. I mean, that's been why it continues and continues and why I want to say is because then the next conclusion is there's some amount that, that I'm coming to believe it. You know, but I understand the importance of believing that. Like, I understand that it's great if I have a good value towards others and talk to them in a way but that's all all going to be improved and accent, accented and, and edified by me having a better value of myself which even relates back to that whole thing where like if somebody feels grief and I feel that grief rather than just feeling it along with them and thinking like wow I gotta get out of this situation because I I can't keep feeling like this, that maybe that's where I get to the point where I can be of help. Why did Jesus, why did God say this is my son who I'm pleased with? I think because that's just, that's just how God sees things. Nature of the Father? Hmm? Nature of the Father? Right. That's just how it is. You know, he made everything and said it's very good. Right? And then we said, no, no, it's not. <laughs> right, have you seen it? <laughs> I mean, and that's one of the conclusions I drew is like, because I've had what internally to me are arguments. Right? And internally that argument kind of goes something like, no, you... Okay, so the internal argument is, you're my uniquely beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I say, no, I'm not. Are you kidding? Have you, have you seen the things that I've done? Have you seen what, what kind of things I've done to people and the kind of abuse that I've inflicted on others? 
and 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 the response is who says that where did you get the idea that that's my sense of how I value you yep and I say because that's what I do <laughs> and God says yeah but my ways are higher than right. that who's right maybe you <laughs> right right so and so like, that's the argument. It's like adjust your feelings to my facts. Mm -hmm. And that's where, where our journey is in life. Mm -hmm. Constantly. Adjusting my feelings to his facts. Mm -hmm. That's the journey of Christianity. Whether we are one year in it, mm -hmm. or 50 or 60 years, we are constantly at that place. That's why when I shared last night about my trust area, as I got right. into work, I said, oh, I trust you, God. I trust you. I trust you. Then I started looking at the word, and when I found out one of the definitions was about feeling safe mm -hmm. and secure, I said, ah, uh, same question I asked you. It was like, me. what do I believe the word? Do I believe that he's a provider? And let's jump into my life. Let's not talk about you. Let's jump into my life now, okay? Mm -hmm. We're talking about one who lost his biological. You got what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to these areas, when I have to go back in that trust, and I'm like, well, I trust you, but wait a minute, you let my dad die. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I, I trust you, but I'm behind on my bills. You got what I'm saying? Right. So I'm constantly, even as a teacher or orator of, of the word, a student of the word, saying that I know where my trust should be. And he says to me, I'm still pleased with you. Mm -hmm. and I say, but how? I just teach your word, I do this, I do that. Same place you're at. Mm -hmm. But I still know the answer is he's right. Mm -hmm. And I'm growing. Right. And if I can't get disappointed and totally disagree with him until I made the choice that I'm not growing. And we've made a life of commitment of continuing to grow. As you reveal something that's wrong, I want to make it right. If I go to the doctor, I don't be like, oh, I got the flu. Oh, I'm going to die. I got the flu. I'm like, well, what's the prescription? Oh, that's what I need to do. You mean to tell me if I take this, you reveal to me if I take this and do this, then I'll get better? And that's where we live at. So I don't even remember, to be honest with you, asking you that question. Yeah. But I, I believe that if that's what I said, but listening to it, it seems like whatever I said, you took the time to ask, seek, not get in tune with the Heavenly Father, and He revealed something between you and Him. Mm -hmm. And now you're at a place of saying, yes, I agree with the Word. That's what I'm hearing. Even mm -hmm. though you said you don't, I'm hearing yes, I do. It's just that I need to adjust my feelings with what he's saying about me and it being this journey. One of the things, um, it's, it's interesting that you say about adjusting my feelings. I have this sheet of cognitive distortions. Before you go there, is that good? Mm -hmm. You said it's your first time here? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're okay? Okay, good. Cognitive I have this sheet with cognitive distortions, and so there's things like catastrophizing, you know, something bad happens, but it's the worst it could possibly be. Okay. Globalization is, you know, that's that's where you get like things like racism, like, you know, okay. you're, you're a dirtbag to me, so all people of your race are dirtbags, you know, or... Or the news report says people from this country are doing this, so that's my my perception of people from that. That's globalization. Okay. Um, and there's a whole list of there's like 14 of them on the one sheet that I have, and one of them is called emotional reasoning, and that's where how I feel is how it is, not what the not whatever the, the facts or the circumstances state. So the facts and the circumstances can state that I'm, like, take with your example, that you're safe. You're safe, everything's fine, but your emotions say, no, that's wrong. And so you go with the emotional reasoning. That's one of the ones that I'm very strong on that, on that page of cognitive distortions. Okay. That's one of the ones that's really strong on me, is that how I feel is how it is. And so it doesn't matter, like, if you even try to use a technique of saying like, okay, let me go through logically and assess the situation factually, and here's what the, the circumstances are, like, that doesn't matter because the feeling says no. So the emotional reasoning is really what drives the whole thing. It's, if I feel a certain way, that's how it is. Can I have fun with this? Yeah, go for it. 
So how do you get to your filler? What do you mean? So for you to fill it, man, how, how do you fill it? Like, how does the filler get there? Are you say, are you trying to say that I think thoughts that provoke the feeling? That's what I'm asking. You. Great. Um, is, it a, is it thoughts that help create your feelings? I think it's a combination. I think so, there's a certain amount that I think there's just physical sensations that manifest and say this is this is you know like a, like. Okay, so for example, I'll wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. and I, I've now started to cope with it this way of, of just saying it's a physical sensation, not an actual thought process. Because I wake up, mm -hmm. and it's what could be described as a as, as like a, a state of panic. You know, I, I'm flushed. My my I'm, I feel like a pulsating in my head. My, you know, my heart's palpitating. My body's hot. I'm sweating. You know that that kind of thing, and I've determined to to take that as just being like I'm having these series of physical events that are com in, that are common with panic, okay. but I'm not thinking or feeling anything that would cause this. Okay. I'm just having the physical sensation, and since that sensation is associated with this other other thing, that's okay. that's what I'm calling it. But it's really just a physical phenomena. That for whatever reason happens in the morning often. So you're training yourself mentally. Right. To deal with your feelings when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it does sound like our thoughts can help train what we feel. Right. Okay. So if that's the case, then that's also some of our solutions as well, right? Mm -hmm. If I was to come in here, Okay, let's reverse it. This is your first time here. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, this is, it's safe. I've been here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to worry about. But you come in and you're like, I don't know, they keep looking at me weird. Mm -hmm. But I say, look, you know, it's safe. You have to make a decision to fight or flight. Mm -hmm. Fight the mental condition to say, I don't know, is this God telling me? Is something going to happen? Or is it just my mental, whatever the case may be, and then going from there to move forward. And I think a lot of times our natural mind, which is what we feed ourselves with, it matters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how old are you? 46. Okay, so you're 46. What are you? Um, 34. 34? Yeah. So you have 46 years mm -hmm. of thinking. Right. And experience in life. How long have you been... Welcome to the journey with God for things Christianity. Uh, since August, when I was 42. Okay. So not quite 43 yet. So. So. Yeah. So four years. You have leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. So I think too, and this is just me. I Christian. I Paul. Mm -hmm. Not just simply <laughs> biblically. Right. So take it with a grain of salt, because mm -hmm. I haven't done. This is just off of my feelings and, and and what I've experienced. I think that we have seen or felt or received the teachings where it's like TV specifically too where oh you're, you're a new preacher all things will pass away the whole things are new mm -hmm. and we expect the 42 years to just disappear mm -hmm. in our thoughts and our patterns and we're just in a new way of, of life right mm -hmm. but in reality God doesn't just dismiss the 42 years he takes the 42 years and he filters them and they become new so there's an area where we have to learn even from our experiences and what he was there the whole time even though you got what I'm saying? Right. So we have to retrain ourselves for instance when you talk about the feeling I know that there's a blessing in feeling mm -hmm. I know that when it comes to worship when it comes to um, decisions that God speaks through a feeling it's a gift on the spiritual spectrum mm -hmm. where you sense God. That can be a gift. You can walk into a place. Let's just say you're standing at the altar, an mm -hmm. altar call, and somebody comes to you and they're crying. Mm -hmm. If you have the ability, as a gift from God, to feel what a person is going through, because you're now feeling it, well, don't you know how to pray? Mm -hmm. You're feeling it. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like now, I'm 
the, the thing that I felt like I was taught, you know, or, or at least received, as whether it was as a weakness, a is actually a strength. Yeah. Yeah. Right. As you're filtering it through. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, too, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an emotional person as well. Sometimes it is a weakness for me. Mm -hmm. But walking with daddy, God, right. is the one that helps to, you said it, discern. Is this being led by you? Or is this me, my physical nature and soul? You got what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's one or the other. But that's why I love what you do is you stay in the word. And that helps to train your thoughts to move forward. And you can't really think those, those things through. And that's, that's why I say, you know, you're amazing. When I watch you and you take the time, when you open your mouth, I know that it's something that has been processed. Mm -hmm. It's something that has been built. It's something that has been going from this way and that way. You also have a gift of looking from the third eye. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's looking this way, you know, you're going to purposely don't take this the wrong way, devil's advocate type of situation mm -hmm. where you're like, well, it could be totally this. Mm -hmm. But people who are mature hopefully can see the value you have and say that Mike is going to always give a perspective that we all need to go into. It's not a wrong or it's mm -hmm. not a right necessarily. It's the holistic view. And that's what we need. When you come to me after I teach and you say, well, I thought about this when you were talking. And my mind is never going that way. You're not saying against anything I'm saying. You're just saying, this is the way I'm viewing it mm -hmm. from this lens. Like right. you viewed it that way. This right. helps me and everybody else to think kingdom. Right. That's a blessing. Well, that's, I mean, that's, it's cool that you bring that up because, you know, in, in terms of what you mean by devil's advocate, um, uh, that that really is kind of one of the things I do is I, is I am trying to think about things and go, well, what if it's the other way? What if we flip this over? What if we look at, you know, can I get to this angle over here and look at it from here instead of from here? I'm going to change that. I don't like the word devil's advocate. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I'm you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I don't like that's the word. But I'll just say, I'll, I'll go with the third lens. Right. Or that third eye, that spiritual eye, where you can definitely see it from a different perspective. Right. You have something unique. And, and I think... Um, I'm still working on it. I'm done. Yeah. Thank you, though. Um, <laughs> I think that... And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that if there's times you can probably feel lonely. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to find a book and a teaching from your perspective mm -hmm. a lot of times because the way that you're you're gifted to see and look at everything. Now I'm sure you can find some things from here to there, but mm -hmm. I've been in that place where I'm like in a meeting, particularly a men's group. Let's go to men's group, right? Mm -hmm. There was a season in men's group where there were just perspectives going around and I'm there like, I don't agree with these perspectives or I see it from a different way. Mm -hmm. And I would sit quiet for a while and I wouldn't say anything. And then I would go home and then I would be like, straight like, this and this and this. But I didn't I contribute <laughs> my feelings. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I was trying to make everybody angry. Or different. It was just, guys, this is the way I see this. Mm -hmm. Now I'm starting to see Christians it's fivefold ministry and fivefold gifts. We need to come together. We need everybody's view so we can see God's view. Exactly. Exactly. And I was like, oh, so I do have to talk. I do have to share this because it's on my heart because it adds as an ingredient to this soup that we're making. That's like what, what you were saying about, you know, your perspective on tough love. Yeah. Right? That that's one of the things like yeah. you're talking about, right? Yeah. And I agree with you. Like that I I see it from that other perspective too, where like you know, it, it it should be, everything should be done in a way that, that builds up and, and that instructs and guides kind of way, you know, like, I kind of, I kind of end up breaking things down into general principles and like one of my general principles and I see it in, in things like you know, you have said, heard it said, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth, but I say, when a man strikes, you turn the other cheek, you know, and, and other things like that that say, don't return harm for harm. And that's the way I end up putting it. It's, it says something about, like, don't recompense evil for evil. I, I, I put it as don't return harm for harm. Like, And I, and 
then I end up seeing in people's conversation and you know everything around me I see where people say you know something's an injustice or whatever and what they really mean was the harm wasn't returned I mean and when something like that happens and you start to see things like you're just like because I very much believed in returning harm for harm <laughs> I mean, I was all about returning. I was the, I was the, I was the agent of returning that harm, and it was going to be twofold, you know. I mean, so to to come to a perspective of saying like you don't return harm for harm. The only reason I can do that is because of this sense of value that I have for myself, and the biggest reason I have a sense of value for myself is because of guys like Ron and Chuck and you. I'm. Pardon me. It's directly related to people that I've had in my life that have done things for me. Because, you know, while I was on at, at the resort, <laughs> no. All right. So here's here's the thing: is I had I've had problems with depression, poor self image. I've the best way to put it is like. And it, it, it really does relate to this whole thing of, like, boys don't cry. But I do, right? Um, and, and I got to toughen up and all, you know. And so how I feel is wrong. How I respond to it is wrong. How I responded to it when I toughened up is wrong. What's wrong with me? I'm a defect. It's fundamentally wrong to be me. And so, I mean, I've had just, just depression suicidally all my life. And so I was in the, the behavioral health unit some time ago. Then I was on my 40th birthday. So on my 40th birthday, just a few, just the day or two before that was when I went in, I was, I was in the the hospital, you know, not able to leave, you know, <laughs> in the part where they don't let you go anywhere, um, on my 40th birthday, and I was like, life just gets worse and worse, you know, I just, I was hopeless, so then I go from there, and by the time you get to two years later, I'm incarcerated for my 42nd birthday. You know, so now life's really getting worse <laughs> and everything that I did that led to that, you know, and oh, th thank you very much. Thank you. Everything I did that led to that and put me there and everybody that I hurt and all the damage that I did. And so then by this point, I mean, when it came to, to even like the lawyer and everything, you know, my dad said that he wanted to help pay for it and everything. <clears throat> and I said, I'm not going to pay you back. I said, don't even, let's not even pretend it's going to be paid back. It will never be paid back. Not a cent. And he said, I still want to do this for you. That's God right there, right? That's your father in heaven. I know you're not going to pay me back. <laughs> I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Because mm -hmm. I love you. Right. And so, I mean... I was with somebody at that time, and uh, we took out everything in my 401k. Her 401k is gone now. We have no savings at all. You know, 20 years worth of my saving up is gone. Everything, you know, so here I am, and I have nothing left, or at least that's my perspective. You know, I have nothing left. I've destroyed my relationships. I'm out of work. 
I don't get to go anywhere. <laughs> I live in a bathroom with a guy who doesn't like me. You know? And... So, that was when I met Ron. And we just continually grew to become friends and everything. And I saw him as like a... As like a... a another father to me. You know? Not, not one to replace my dad, but in addition to... Um, you know, and, and uh, so it got so, it got so to the point where I was in despair that, that uh, I basically wrote a letter to him telling him everything about my life and everything. I mean, even more detailed, explicitly detailed about things that I did and, and so forth. Um, specifics <clears throat> and and basically as far as I was concerned at that moment I was telling him why I was going to kill myself and so then uh, I mean and I normally don't go into I normally don't tell people about some of the, the more mystical things that happen to me just because there's it's personal for one thing, but then also it's just kind of like, well, you know, how much of that's an interpretation and how much of that is a delusion or what, you know, could be characterized as a delusion, let's say. And, and I don't care. Like, I, my perspective on it is I had an experience and there was an outcome to that experience. And whether that experience was because chemicals were triggered in my brain because I was stressed and suicidal or whether because there was some kind of divine intervention, I don't care what the reason was. Something happened, something resulted. Like, you know, so I don't normally give the details on that kind of stuff. And another thing, like, I've had with some people that I have told it to have, you know, kind of felt like, well, I never had an experience like that. But yeah. <clears throat> but uh, in general, that later that night when I, I handed him the letter, he never, or at least at this point hadn't read it. I don't know if at any point in history since then he's read it. He didn't read it, and he just said, you know, something something along the lines of like, this is enough. This is this is not happening anymore. And just things started to happen that were weird, <laughs> really, really weird. Um, and so that's why I preface it by saying, you know, I don't care what it was that really happened. I just care that it did happen. And and what I think is important is like everything around me just kind of disappeared. And all I had, I he even kind of just became like wah, 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 while he's doing whatever his praying that he was doing was. He was he's going like this and. You know, and he, he went like this. He kept going like this with his arms all, you know, both arms completely outstretched. And I just started looking at him. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm like, this is not even happening. This is stupid. There's Jesus on the cross and it's Ron. <laughs> you know? And I'm looking at him and like, the, the more I was like, the more I was like, this is just stupid. <laughs> you know and, and the more it became Jesus on a cross <laughs> and not Ron and then it turned into this and I, I assume it was completely internal and I, I don't know I have no idea maybe I was talking out loud but it became an argument about how I resented having ever been born I hated being alive. You deserve to be on that cross. If you're real, why didn't you let me live at a time when I could have been, you know, took a couple whacks at those nails? I mean, I was furious. You know, this is the day that I'm basically resigned myself to. It's no longer a fantasy anymore. I'm going to I'm going to end it, you know? And I just kept unleashing this fury and the message I got back was, I know you're angry. And when you're finished venting, 
I love you. Mm. And I just want to take you in my arms and tell you that I love you. And I'm like, well, this doesn't fit the religious narrative. <laughs> <laughs> As a sidebar, you know, like, you're not supposed to tell Jesus you wish you could have put him on the cross yourself <laughs> as part of your conversion experience. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that just turned into, like, more unleashing of fury until, like, I really did just kind of run out of steam. It was just like... Well, out. It was like, all right, well, now I know you know. Uh, and all these years I was screaming out, like, why do you hate me? <laughs> and didn't hear a response of, you know, you justifying why my crappy life has to exist. And, uh, you know, now I know that there's there was something there to hear me, and it heard me, and it said, I love you as a response you know and even that's kind of like a hard thing like to say I'm the one who judged God as evil right so I judged God as evil and said you justify yourself to me right and he said I love you. <laughs> like he's not going to argue the point. He's not. He's not going to do Christian apologetics and tell me why God is good, even though there's this, that, and the other thing in the world. His response to the question is, "I love you," and that just keeps going to that whole interpretation of like I'm the one that has the problem with the way things are. Yeah. Me, me too. Right? Wow. And uh. So that was that was a first significant experience, and that was almost four years ago now. At the end of the month, it'll be four years. And it is about. Yeah. Wow. That's the first. Eight thirty-one. You know today's pastor's birthday. Was today's pastor's birthday? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll have to text him happy yes, birthday. I was you know. I didn't know. Yeah, today's his birthday. Um, That's great, man. So then that kind of led to. This whole thing where I then started to have to question, like, okay, if I had rejected Christianity all my life, what do I accept about it now? And honestly, the answer is very little. I mean, basically, the things that I had rejected by the time I was 12, 13, whatever it was, I basically still reject. And then on top of that, without going into, you know, any doctrines, or I don't really feel like arguing it. <laughs> Basically, when I look at my experience and I look at what I rejected as a child, it kind of affirms it. And so there's, there's a large amount to which I guess you could say I'm heretical in my viewpoint. Right now. I mean, and I'm okay with that. I'm not going to, I don't, I don't like to push it on anybody. At least in terms of, you know, like I wouldn't challenge your way of seeing things in any way other than to challenge it, which is what I do. Not not to say like, oh, that's wrong, you know, oh, that's, you know, you've got this. But I go home and I get frustrated, just like you do. I, I, I think like, oh, why can't they see, like, because it's, cause it's consistent with my experience, this thing that I did 30 years before where I said, this seems wrong to me, then I had an experience that said, it was wrong. You know, and that's, I mean, that's for you to grow into, you know, as you hopefully understand that when boiled down to its very essence, the most important thing about the message of the Word of God, what you asked me, is that he's saying about you, this is my beloved son and who I'm well pleased. I like to say it, this is my uniquely beloved son in whom I walk least. Because the way that he loves you and the way he loves me is different. It's it's always unique for every single individual. And so there's 
there's issues with that, you know, but that's part of this whole process. Like when you ask me, do I believe the word of God? That's, that's that same question. Like how much of this do I believe now or not? You know, and uh, I just want to want to take that and help people that are in grief and in, in despair and who don't think that they see that, you know, who don't see themselves with value. You know, like I know what it's like to look in the mirror and say, there's not a single person in this world I hate more than the guy I'm looking at right now. You know, to just fundamentally hate who you are and to want to be somebody else. So that was the first part of the experience, but then later came was because, okay, you talked about how, okay, you're a new creation, so let's undo everything, right? And I got frustrated with that process of like, okay, so I've spent my whole life trying to be somebody other than who I am, and now I finally have the ability to do that. That was basically like the, one, one of the, the premises I was working from. Now I finally have the ability to stop being me. So then as I didn't see that unraveling, that became a point of frustration, where then became more arguments with God, <laughs> saying, you know, when are you going to change this about me? And that's, that's why I said about like an attribute, a characteristic, a, a, a personality trait, whatever, is neither good nor bad. It's how you use it. And that's part of this argument process of saying, you know, when are you going to change this about me? When are you going to make me so I'm not so hot headed anymore? When are you going to make me more patient? When are you going to make me so that I can, you know, things just roll off my back? And, and, and I have the father saying to me, you said you're supposed to be that way. <laughs> you know, whose idea is it that that's what you should be like? You know, wh why is it wrong to, to have this kind of emotional response to it? It's how you use it. It's how you use it. It really is. It's, you know, you can use it and you can say, man, what, what so-and-so said, man, that just really rubbed me the wrong way. And you can, you can retaliate or you can say, oh, you're wrong. You know, you're an idiot or, or, or something like that. Or you can, you can say, you know what, I'm really going to think about this and see if maybe there's a difference of approach in it, you know, that I need to take with this person or, or maybe there's something I can reveal about myself that will cause this person to rethink that, you know, like, it's good that it rubbed me the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of seeing that as, as a negative attribute that people say things and I get irritated, you know, rather than just people say things and, ah, you know, whatever, that's their problem. Like, I don't, I don't go, I don't go whatever, that's their problem. That's not, that's not my thought process. That's not my emotion. My emotion is, Ugh! and I want this person to at least change their heart on the, you know, and so, like, there's this whole argument with God of thinking, you know, this is now my, as I'm progressing along perspective of, of realizing that that was what was being said was, it's not the characteristic that's wrong. I'm not going to change it. You know, I'm not going to become, but then the, the irony of the whole thing is that as you grow into this, I'm more patient. I'm more easygoing. I'm, you know, things roll off my back a little bit more. Um, so, but the first thing that I had to do when you talk about surrender, I had to say, I had to say, I give up on this process of attempting to change myself. I don't want to change the characteristics about myself. And then the next step was to understand it wasn't the characteristics that were the problem, it was just how I, how I channeled it, how I used it. Um, so I was frustrated with this process where, where I wasn't changing. You know, I thought, finally, I get to stop being me. I'm a new creation, right? 
So it's basically an unrealistic expectation based on a wrong interpretation of what that may meant. And uh, so one of the things is that I was not merely violent towards other people, but also towards myself, physically, not just not just in terms of my self-talk, but actually physically violent towards myself. Actually, physically, you know, I'll, I mean, and hard. So I did this to the point where, I mean, my hands were cut, they were bruised. I have no idea. I, I'm sure I've broken my hand multiple times and I've just never, you know, like there's a lump right here. I'm sure that's what, one of the things, you know, so we're not talking about like, like just kind of like, I mean, it was hard. And, you know, here, anywhere that I can swing and, and hit, you know, and that's, that's something I would do to myself because that's how much hatred I had for who I was, was, you know, I'm going to beat the whatever out of myself. And uh, so then one time when this happened, I texted Chuck and I said, I can't deal with this. And I just finished beating myself silly. And he said, you know, come down to Willie's. Yeah, uh, so him and I don't even remember exactly who showed up, Roddy, you know, who, whoever was was available, they all they all showed up. I'm not sure, were you there? No, I didn't think you were, but I didn't know. Um, and, you know, here I am, at, at this point, it's probably less than two years, maybe a year and a half at the most, that I had been coming, coming there, <clears throat> and uh, so as far as I'm concerned, these are guys that really don't even hardly know me. They certainly don't know my background and, and so forth. And it just it meant so much to me to have these guys sit around and say how valuable I was to them. And, like, that just, that was kind of the reverse of a traumatic experience as well. So there's these two experiences that are, like, like trauma totally drastically changes who you are, but this is, like, that kind of thing, but in a positive way. So the first was that whole experience with Ron, and then the second is this with Chuck, where all of a sudden... It was like, you know, I mean, although there had been people in my life, my family, you know, whatever other friends and everything that, that it expressed it out, like it never really stuck until this particular point in time. Thank you. And there was just something about guys who were essentially almost not strangers per se, but, you know, not people that I had gotten super involved with at that point um, taking time out of their day to say our priority is going to be Mike and we're all going to tell him how much we value him right. wow. you know so I mean from that perspective like when we talk about like am I my brother's keeper and the answer is yes like that was it right there and so that that really started a, a bigger aspect of that transformation, which is why I was then able to say, when you give that message about, you know, how, how you talk to other people and everything, like, that's what I'm seeing. Like, okay, I'm seeing them talking to me and telling me how much value I have. And I'm saying, they're, they're practicing that. I'm on board with that message. And then I'm going, they practice that, but whoa, what was I doing? You know, what was I doing to myself? Because I was assaulting myself, not just physically, but spiritually, you know, emotionally, every way possible, being my own abuser. And so you know, that's, that's my background. That's my, <laughs> that's my story. That's my experience. And, and so 
like everything always fits here. Like, here's another one of my principles: like to treat everybody, approach every single person from the perspective. Like, like I'll listen to people debate philosophy from time to time, and they'll talk about like an illogical conclusion or an irrational belief or something. And so I go from this perspective of there is no such thing. For every single person, every conclusion they draw is logical. Every thought process that they have is rational, right? Even though they're, they, they might be cognitive distortions, they might be unhealthy, they might not be processing it in a way that from an external perspective seems logical or rational, but to them it is because their collection of what they've experienced, what they've been taught, what they've witnessed in others, and so on, is what's leading to the way this thought process works. So if I approach every single person as having drawn the correct conclusion based on their input, then I, then I don't see people as being stupid or drawing an irrational conclusion. I see them as someone who's drawn the correct conclusion based on their input. So then I go back to myself and I say, it took somebody else giving me this input of saying, come down to Willie's and we're gonna talk to you to change the way that my thought process works. So that didn't happen <clears throat> until somebody else put it into me. And so that's, the way that I, I, I come from is like, if somebody sees things different, you know, that's that's the whole thing I see. Like, okay, so you have the question of theodicy, you know what that is. Right? Okay, that's that's the whole thing of, if God is good, then why is there evil? Okay. That's, that's called, it's called theodicy. Mm -hmm. And so think about what that question says. That question says, if God is good, how come there is indisputably, undeniably, nobody can can be can refute this evil in the world? One is an if, one is incontrovertible. Which one's incontrovertible in that question? What's incontrovertible is that there's evil, there's suffering, there's war, there's etc. What's in question is, is God good? Right? So where are people in their perspective is they believe in pain, death, grief, suffering. I could list. They believe in suspicion towards others. They, they believe in people hurting people. But they don't necessarily believe in goodness, kindness, compassion. People who are trustworthy. You know, I mean, I talk to people sometimes and, and they really don't trust anybody, yeah. you know. So how do you change those perspectives and say, there is kindness, there is growth. I had a perspective that everything only ever got worse. How do you, how do you get me to believe that things do get better? You know, so I, I work from this idea of saying, nobody needs to believe in these negative things. They need to believe in what's positive. They need to believe in what's uplifting. They need to believe in these other things. And they're not going to believe in that unless I show it to them. So you're not going to believe that people are trustworthy unless I earn your trust. You're not going to believe in kindness unless I treat you with it. Right. Yeah. That's good, man. And so that's why... I need this, whatever it is, you know, just whatever it is that helps me build this understanding of my own value, because you can't give what you don't have. How am I, how am I going to give you value if I don't have it in myself to give to you? I just think about gold and the refining process, like it's very valuable, mm -hmm. but if you ask the gold what it had to go through to get that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think, I mean, that's just what I see. And, and, you know, again, you've seen it through everybody else. Everything you talk about is your refining process. Mm -hmm. 
you know, considerably hit yourself, or whatever the case may be, you go and you treat other people. I always, tell, I always say this when I coach a counselor, is, man, you're going to be amazing when you get through this. Mm-hmm. And people are like, well, it's, I'm like, you are. Like, think about it. Whoever daddy wants to put in front of you in the future, you have experience, you have Bible, you have success, and you have failure. That's what he wants to utilize. Mm-hmm. You know, we we view it as degree, doctorate, all this, you know, PhD, all this stuff to be qualified to speak and minister to people. Mm-hmm. So what I think as far as the kingdom of God, look at who we took his disciple. Look at who he used. It mm-hmm. wasn't, oh, that, he was valedictorian. Let me use him. Oh, mm-hmm. he was, you know, whatever. He took people, you know, they fall asleep me in prayer. Like, he, <laughs> he specializes in taking things that people view as mm-hmm. nothing and mm-hmm. doing great things with it. Right. And so I love that. Even the explanation of what they say Jesus looked like and everything else, like, he's just, he, he affirms himself. So through this process, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like the adversary kind of snitches on where we have value at in our struggle. Mm-hmm. I'm like, God really wants to bless this and use this. And so I have just changed my mindset to say, what is now a struggle, I have to figure it out and get in there to get on the other side of this thing. Because even if it's not just attached to me, it's somebody else. If I didn't go through what I go through, I couldn't sit here with you. Today. Right. And that's that's, one, that's what I'm learning too, is like, the right. things that I've been through is why I can... Yep. Go through it with someone else. That's why you can do what you can do. And that's what it's about. That's where we are. I think that's where Daddy wants us to stay. Mm-hmm. And so I think that there's always going to be something that we can work through. Even when we feel like we're the best of the best, we still want to reveal something in our heart that needs work. Because it's something that we're going to And then he's going to bring to us. A lot of times I go through what I minister to. Mm-hmm. That's just what he does with me. I go through what I minister to. I preach about trust. I didn't just pick that scripture out of the air. That's uh-huh. me. It's my life. Right. So I preach through those situations. So a part of what I sit there at the three, I come from this perspective. And we should come from a different perspective. And yes, I come from a different perspective. But together, it's something that's unique. And so I feel even locally that with the men's ministry, that God wants to bring a lot of broken men. Mm-hmm. But he also wants to use the one that has them broken that's trying to get it together to help minister to them. Pastor, I was talking about new man training, people coming out of prison, people going this. If he don't have the best core foundation between you and between John for his story, what? Mm-hmm. All John's going through, what you going through, what Pastor is, what everybody is, Chuck, Roddy, even the younger generation, Charles, come on, man. There is not one man that can show up and not feel value and understanding, and we still learn from each other. So I think he's preparing us to make that impact on a local area. Because what we're doing now, you are going to continue to do that. Now you know there's a spot that you can go that people may not see you, may not know you, and you can take a younger guy, whoever it is that God's going to lead you to, and just be like, let me hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, when somebody's going through something, your number's going to be one that's going to go out in the future. And like, you need to talk to Mike. Because mm-hmm. he has fruit in that area. No one can talk you through those thoughts but Mike. Because he's had those thoughts. Uh-huh. And he's been through that situation. And so I'm excited to hear these things and know what's going on. Because that's just where we're going. And that's what we need to go and do. I think that's the heart of God. That's that love. That's that one where you can look in the face and say, oh, you know what? I love you, man. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. I know. We're going to get through this thing together. You pay up time. Okay. I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm glad I was able to give some of that background on myself. Absolutely, man. I'm just, like I said, it really makes me um, excited about what's about to take place. Um, the last six months, I felt like we were saying we got to reposition ourselves uh-huh. so that we can be where God wants us to be so that he can bring us who he needs to bring us. I'm, I'm excited Ooh. about it. All right, man. Thanks again very much for your time. Oh, no problem. It's I hope it's I hope it's on. giving you food for thought as well. Absolutely. All right, sounds good. All right. I really appreciate it. Oh, Thank no you. Problem. All right, take care.